Hi everyone, my name is Jason Matthew. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to do basic troubleshooting on Cisco WLC connectivity issues. After posting a couple of videos in my YouTube channel, I started getting requests to create troubleshooting videos. As a start, I thought we will start with WLC connectivity issues, connectivity issues itself. Initially, I started with flowchart, but it became uh, very crowded. So I searched in Google and I found this mind master tool that is giving a better uh, graphical interpretation of uh, the same thing so i thought we'll use that model to uh, start with this troubleshooting guide instead of flowchart i know i will not be able to cover the entire uh, troubleshooting uh, things in this particular flow because there are n number of combinations that can lead into uh, any kind of issues in your network side so i'm just showing some of the major or the basic stuffs that you can avoid when you are doing the implementation the other stuffs you will anyway end up in uh, creating that troubleshooting uh, model or contacting tag if you have some other scenarios that i missed in this particular thing uh, in this particular flow you uh, put it in the comments so that we can try to uh, accommodate that in next video or something like that or it will be there in the comment section so that people can follow that as I mentioned, I uh, split this one into uh, multiple sections. As a first section, let's uh, talk about the WLC uh, switch physical connectivity issues. When we talk about the physical connectivity, the first thing that we have to check is, do we have the cable connected? I can, I can say that it's, uh, it's it feels very silly, but this is a normal scenario that we ca we came across in our multiple times in our uh, experience because you will have the cable connected but it's not properly inserted it's not getting inserted uh, properly because it's getting touched somewhere um, and the patch panel is having some issues so it can be any reason but make sure your cables are connected the next one uh, are you using an sfp module so if you are using an sfp module first thing is uh, is that particular SFP module is supported on this WLC. So you can go to your deployment guide of that particular uh, hardware type or hardware model. Then you can see that uh, SFP support. So this one is the SFP support list for 5520 WLC. So you can see that these are the SFP modules that supported on this particular hardware. So you have to make sure you are using one of the, uh, one of the uh, SFP modules that listed down here then then only it will start working because so that's the only supported hardware list sfp module list so you have to make sure you are using a uh, supported sfp module uh, for your uh, connectivity the next one which cable model you are using so you have two options rj45 and optical fiber so if you're using rj45 you have to make sure your cable is not faulty so you can use cable tester or you can use your uh, diagnosis uh, feature available on Cisco W uh, Cisco switches, or you can um, you can use any any kind of uh, manual testing that 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 can be done on the uh, cable. So RJ45 cable, make sure that cable is not faulty. If it's faulty, replace it. Then also make sure the SFE module that is you are uh, using on the WLC is detected by the WLC so uh, it can be supported but it can be faulty so the same way cable can go into faulty mode the same way sfp also can uh, go into that if humidity uh, in your lab is more or something like that in some of the countries you will face that kind of issues in some of the areas you will face that issue so if you have that kind of scenarios uh, even the contacts will have the uh, fungus uh, formed in that contacts and you will not get the proper contact uh, so in that scenario use that contact cleaner and use that kind of uh, uh, spray or something to get it rectified but there is a chance that you don't have the cable connected properly so avoid those kind of scenarios on rj45 when we talk about optical fiber the first thing we have to check is again the cable is faulty or not if it's not faulty you can continue to the next one verify the cable model is supported on the sfp module uh, are you using the right cable model for the sfp then next one again uh, you have to make sure if you are using an sfp is it getting detected by the wlc or not then validate the polarity of the cable so 
polarity when we talk about optical fiber cable uh, let me uh, show you this model so basically the transmitter should go into the receiver side that's a basic theory if you are transmitting something it should be uh, uh, reaching to the end in the receiver state so you have to make sure this particular cable is connected in the right model so that this polarity issue is not there in your network so only if you have the right polarity then only this wlc will be able to communicate to the switch so you make sure your polarity is connected properly otherwise your link will not come up the next one is uh, are you using 1 gig sfp or 10 gig sfp if you are using 10 gig sfp make sure all the sfps are in same model mixed mode is not supported in wlc mixed mode is supported but that is in a different scenario because when we are talking about mixed mode, the first SFP module is going to take care of all of the other w, uh, modules. Meaning, the first SFP will do a negotiation and that will be the negotiation used by all other ports. So you make sure the first one is having the right SFP and uh, use the same model. But mixed mode is never uh, recommended. So, But it can work, but this is the uh, limitation on that. Then uh, for the first uh, SFP module, uh, if you use a uh, faulty one, then it can uh, fail on the other ports also because the other ports will not be able to negotiate because the first port itself is failed. Then second one, uh, online insert, uh, insertion, insertion and removal, the OIR, is not supported between 10 gig and 1 gig. For an example, you have a 10 gig SFP module and you want to take that out and put 1 gig then it's not supported you have to reboot the wlc so the negotiation um, oar is not supported on wlc so you have to keep that in mind so whenever you are putting 1g sfp you make sure your wlc is rebooting uh, after that insertion of the w, uh, sfp module so that it can negotiate and make sure it's msa compliant so when we talk about msa compliant it's a multi-source agreement uh, that uh, that uses in the uh, WLC side. So uh, that uses in the SFP manufacturing side. So you have to make sure multi-source agreements are uh, like that is supported on your SFP because WLC only understand the MSA compliant uh, SFP modules. So these are the uh, basic steps uh, when we talk about cable model and uh, SFP side. Then switch port status once you got um, um, this links up and running you make sure your speed is negotiated as per your cable standard sfp and uh, all the connectivity side duplex based on your uh, network connectivity it should be negotiated on both the sides make sure the port type detected uh, properly on both the sides stp make sure STP spanning tree is not blocking anything because of any kind of uh, configuration issues and error disabled state uh, it can be any reason error disabled state can be uh, because of any reason but make sure the switch port is not in the error disabled state at any condition so we need that up and running condition for any any kind of physical connectivity other ports like um, you have uh, uh, SIMC port that is Cisco uh, Cisco SIMC port the next one is uh, uh, service port so these ports are used for out of band uh, configurations and um, handling the hardware and all SIMC port can be used for handling the hardware you can even uh, reboot your WLC remotely and those kind of scenarios so SIMC port um, you can uh, you can use it for any kind of uh, troubleshooting or if your controller is uh, hung or something you can reboot the WLC from the SIMC port connectivity so if you are using SIMC port you make sure this particular port is enabled first you have an option to disable SIMC port so if it's uh, not enabled and if you want to use it you please enable that SIMC port the next one is um, make sure the ip address is assigned manually or dscp is as, uh, assigned for that so there is an option to uh, fall back from manual to dscp so it's up to you uh, up to your uh, requirement so either it should be a manually configured ip address or it should be a dscp configured ip address 
service port the same thing it can be manually uh, configured or the uh, dscp configured so these are the physical port connectivity anyway the cm uh, simc port and service port is directly coming as a one gig rj45 uh, cable so you don't have to worry about the sfp modules and all only thing is you have to just make sure your rj45 cable is not faulty and it's connected properly and all those basic stuffs so these are the major points that uh, needs to be checked on the WLC and switch physical connectivity side. Let's move to the uh, second state. So uh, second state uh, is talking about the CDP neighborship between the WLC and switch. So there will be some companies having uh, complaints, security complaints issues with it, CDP enable. If you are uh, having a uh, security complaints issue and you have to keep it disabled, it's completely fine. I'm just talking about how to use CDP neighborship uh, details to troubleshoot the um, connectivity issues. So it's up to you. So first thing, CDP status, is it enabled? If it's enabled, then make sure both the sites are running a same version. If it's not enabled, then make sure you are enabling um, on both the sites, enabling CDP on both the sites with same version. The next one, uh, lag state on the WLC side, do you have the lag enabled? If lag is enabled, then we are talking about uh, link aggregation between uh, switch and the WLC. For an example, 5520 is having two ports that can act as a single port with lag enable and the other side you have to run channel group channel group uh, with mode on so it won't understand anything else because wlc always negotiate with mode on so you have to make sure the other side switch or w uh, or on any other device that is configured with channel group mode on that's a only available option that can be used with cisco wlc if lag state is disabled, then we are talking about multiple ports connecting individually to the switch. So if lag is disabled and if you have only one port connected, you make sure that particular port is mapped to all the interfaces, the logical interfaces on WLC. The second scenario is uh, lag is disabled and you have multiple ports connected. In that, section, uh, in that kind of scenario, make sure each ports are connected to the switch port that is related to the port mapping on the interfaces so you will have your dynamic interfaces created on your uh, wlc and each and every dynamic interface will be mapped to some of the interfaces uh, some of the ports on the wlc there will be a backup port also in that kind of in case of uh, management interface so in that kind of scenario you make sure your switch configuration and your uh, port configuration on the other side is also uh, aligned uh, you have the proper vlan mapping and everything so that's how you uh, do um, the multiple port connectivity then uh, next scenario is uh, are you connecting your wlc to a vss or vpc device set so vss means uh, let me show you okay so this is the first one virtual port channel uh, quick configuration guide is the document i am showing here so you can see how this particular uh, vpc uh, works on the uh, network so you make sure your wlc is connected uh, as per the vpc standard so this is the uh, nexus series example so this is how vpc works in the background the next scenario is uh, vss so there is something available on uh, 6500 so you can see some of the scenarios here how this uh, distribution uh, switch works with uh, vss uh, so you can you can uh, make sure your wlc is connected in the right way as per this particular vss standard virtual switching system or virtual port channel so you make sure your wlc is connected based on that particular um, configuration on the switch side let's close this video here because it's uh, becoming too lengthy i don't want to put lengthy videos in my uh, channel so i'll split this one into multiple uh, parts so this one i will be posting it as a part one then i'll be continuing part two uh, starting from switchboard mode configuration thank you for watching